Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number two, part A from January 2023, Pure Mathematics P1, International A Level LXL. Uh, this question here is about these coordinates that were given of three points P, Q, and R. And we've got to prove that angle P, Q, R is 90 degrees. All right, angle P, Q, R is equal to 90 degrees. Now, there's a few different ways we could do this. The simplest way, I think, would be by using gradients, which I'm going to show you how to use. Um, but there are other ways. I'll show you how to use both ways. And this, these, these questions are questions where many, many students lose marks. Okay, it's unnecessarily lose marks. Okay, because they don't write have enough information. They don't write a conclusion. Uh, they just leave things open ended without stating certain things which they should should state. And I'll explain how that happens. But first of all. Um, although in the real exam, I don't think it would be that wise for such an easy question. I'm going to just make a little sketch here just to picture what's happening. It looks like we have to go into the negative side of the X. So I'll just draw something like this. So you have P has a point negative 3, 7, something like that. The other one's 9, 11. So negative 3 and 7 say it's up here somewhere. It's doing it... Um, quite less, uh, rough, then 9 and 11, somewhere up there, and then 12 and 2, okay, somewhere like this, okay, that's P, that's Q, that's R, so we've got to prove that the, the angle PQR is a right angle, okay, got to prove that that's a right angle, so, the simplest way to do this would be to find the gradient of the line PQ. Okay, so this is P, this is Q. The gradient is the change in Y over the change in X. The gradient of a line is given by the change in Y, Y1 minus Y2 over the change in X, X1 minus X2, or the other way around. You could say Y2 minus Y1, X2 minus X1, it doesn't matter. So I've got these two coordinates. I'm going to subtract their Y coordinates from each other. So I'll do, I'll do it this way, 11 minus 7 divided by 9 minus minus 3, 9 minus negative 3. So that's going to give you 4 over 12, which is 1 third. And then I find the gradient of QR. The gradient of QR, this is, remember this is P, this is Q, this is R. So I'll do the same thing here. I'll do the change in y, 2 minus 11, over the change in x, which is 12 minus 9. Okay, so 2 minus 11 gives you negative 9, and 12 minus 9 gives you 3, minus 9 over 3 is negative 3, and we can see that the gradient of PQ multiplied by the gradient of QR gives you 1 third, multiplied by minus 3, which is negative 1. Now, many students will leave the answer like this. They say, okay, no, we, the, the two gradients are negative reciprocals. When you multiply them, you get minus 1. And, and they will leave the answer like that. Okay, they won't mention the fact that you say, you should always mention this conclusion as the product of the gradient of PQ and the gradient of QR is equal to negative 1, therefore PQ is perpendicular to to QR. QR, and that means that the angle PQR is equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so you should write a statement like this at the end. Don't just leave it like this. Okay, you'll definitely lose a mark if you do that. Right, now that's probably the simplest way of proving that angle is 90 degrees. We could also do it another way by using the a length formula. Okay, we could use a length formula. I can find the length of PQ and the length of um, QR and the length of PR. So I could find the length of these three sides. Okay, I can find the length of these three sides. And then I can prove that they satisfy Pythagoras' theorem. That when I take PQ and square it, and QR and square it, 
they add up to PR squared. So I can use the length formula, for example, I can find that PQ squared, and the length of PQ squared is going to be the change in X, could be the square root of, have minus three minus nine, that's going to be um, minus 12 squared, 144, plus seven minus 11, which is minus four squared, which is 16. That gives you the square root of 160, is that? 160. And you can say that P Q R squared, Q R squared is going to give you uh, the square root of, you have nine minus 12, which is three, three squared is nine. 11 minus two, which is nine, and nine squared is 81. So that gives you the square root of, well, we, in fact, we, we, we don't have to put the square root because we put squared. Okay, we've taken the square of them. So that, that's going to give you uh, 90. 81 plus 9 is 90. Okay, and we can see that PR, PR squared, PR squared, okay, is minus 3 minus 12, which is minus 15. So that's 15 squared, which is 225 plus 7 minus 2, which is 5, 5 squared is 25. That gives you 250. So if I add these together, I can see that, therefore, PQ squared plus QR squared is equal to PR squared. And it's true, because that's 160 plus 90 does give us 250. So we can say that as this is true, we can say as P, PQ squared plus PR squared is, P, is equal to PR squared, therefore PR is the hypotenuse and the angle PQR equals 90 degrees, something like that. Right, so that is, of course should be written neatly, but that's just giving you an idea of how to use the lengths of the three sides to prove that that's a right angle also. Okay, by showing that they fulfill Pythagoras' theorem. But you should have a statement at the end showing that. You know, as, you know, the, the square of the two shorter sides equals the square of the hypotenuse, therefore, you know, uh, that angle must be 90 degrees. The, two, to the, the square of the two shorter sides is equal to the square of the longest side. That means the longer side is the hypotenuse, and therefore the angle PQR is 90 degrees because this Pythagoras theorem only applies to a right angle triangle. All right, so that's two ways of doing it. I think part, uh, the way I did it here, showing the, the gradients, is way less hassle. Okay, but anyway, as you wish. Now, part B, it says, given that the point S is such that P, PQRS forms a rectangle, find the coordinates of s so you have p q r s so s is going to be somewhere over here s is going to be somewhere over here all right so we've got to find where s is now there's a few different ways of doing it now the the easiest way i think of doing this is to ask yourself how do you go from q to p so q is 9 11 and p is negative 3 7 and how you get from Q to P is the same way you get from R to S because R, S is parallel to P, Q. So R is 12, 2. So how, if we go from 9, 11, 9, 11, and we go to minus 3, 7, okay, we've got to take the same steps for, to go from 12, 2 to the coordinates of S. Okay, we've got to take those same steps. Okay, so from 9 to negative 3, how do I go from 9 to negative 3? Well, I've got to go down the 9. I have to take away from it 12. 9 minus 12, that gives you negative 3. And how do I go from 11 to 7? I have to take away 4 from 11 to give me 7. Okay, that means I've got to take away 12. I've got to take away 12 from 12, that gives me 0. And I've got to take away... From 2, I've got to take away 4, I get negative 2. So S is going to be 0 and negative 2. Okay, so in fact, it's going to be right down here. Okay, it's going to be over here. That's where S is going to be. Okay, so 0, negative 2 are the coordinates of S. Okay, so that's 
S has coordinates 0, negative 2, and there is the answer to part B, and I think that was it. Yeah, that was question number 2. A and B, part A and B. So there, we could have used vectors for this, although we haven't really gone through vectors in P1. Um, in fact, we don't do vectors until P4. All right. Um, but the simple vectors that we need for this is just stuff that we've covered in IGCSE. So you should understand that, all right, the vector that takes us, the vector that takes us from Q to P is the same vector that takes us from R to S because they're parallel and the same length because it's a rectangle. Okay, rectangles have the property that the opposite sides are parallel and the same length. So we use that same kind of, we kind of use vectors. We thought, how to get from there to there, you got to go. The vector is 9 to minus 3, negative 12, and that's going to be 11 to 4. That's negative 4. So we, we, we took, you know, we, we basically took this point and we transformed it by this vector, gave you 0 and minus 2. Okay, so that concludes question number 2 from this paper. Again, be very careful in part a to make a little statement at the end don't just leave it open-ended like this all right you should state because the gradients are negative or the product of the gradients are negative one therefore they are perpendicular lines and that that means that pqr is 90 degrees or if you use the length formula you have to state that they you know because the square of these two shorter, shorter sides the sum of the square of the two shorter sides is equal to the square of the hypotenuse that satisfies Pythagoras theorem, meaning PR is a hypotenuse and PQR is 90 degrees. Okay, so other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that's going to appear in this region over here. Other questions from um, this topic of, I guess this is to do with straight line graphs, you could say, can be found in this uh, playlist that will be over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch the video that will show up over here, which will... Um, help you to use my channel to uh, you know revise and to to use it efficiently find what you need quickly for my channel thank you for watching and see you soon